episode is brought by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you! Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Red Raptor Writes. For today's paleo myth, well, it's summer, people are at the beach, and at home we cuddle up to rewatch the Sharknados. Now is the perfect time for YouTubers and pretend educational television to make bank off of baseless Negalodon conspiracy content. How bad, 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 bad can I be? I'm sure we've all heard this paleo myth before. I've brought it up a few times on my channel before too. Despite every scientist worth their degrees telling us the Meg is extinct, somehow this giant prehistoric shark still torments our oceans, hiding deep where no one can find it. Aside from all the times it comes up to take ominous images and shaky videos. Are the scientists wrong? Is this apex predator still alive today? No. I'm not gonna play around with you on this one. This myth is absolute shrekking dung. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Rather than giving both sides like I usually do, I'll be explaining what the Megalodon was in the myth section and then totally demolishing the so-called evidence when I get to the facts. If you came looking for a campfire story about a mythical shark, then please click away. I'm here to talk about the science, the facts, not hype up some tall tales. So now guys, let's dig this up. Although Megalodon has become a pop culture icon, we have to remember that it was just an animal back when it was alive, not some movie monster. First, let's peel back some of the legend to reveal what this animal really was. The Meg was the last and the largest member of the lineage nicknamed the Megatooth Sharks. These were massive lamniform sharks within the family Otodontidae. Our subject has recently been reclassified as a species within the Atodus genus itself with the scientific name Omegalodon. Likely it directly descended from members of the Atodus genus, such as O. obliquus. It makes sense that Megalodon would be considered a later species of Atodus, becoming the ultimate megatoothed shark. The final member of this lineage lived during the Miocene and Pliocene epochs from about 23 to 2.6 million years ago. And of course, that means no Meg survives with us to this day. To this day! To this day! We still have some giant sharks with us, such as whale and basking sharks, of which large females can grow to 15 meters and 10 meters respectively. Our modern behemoths pale in comparison to a 10 to 20 meter 100 ton megalodon. Many of them only made it to about 10 meters, but still this is the largest shark to have ever lived. Also, I should note how the whale shark and basking shark are filter feeders, feasting on plankton, krill, and other tiny creatures unfortunate enough to get sucked up. So yeah, we probably ain't getting any creature features with them. Megs though, these guys were whale killers. Much of their diet consisted of small to mid-sized cetaceans, and we know this because they kept leaving bite marks on their victims. Sometimes even the teeth themselves are found embedded in bones. It doesn't take Batman to figure this one out. Meg menus were varied to include toothed and baleen whales, sea turtles, pinnipeds, as well as other sharks. Specifically, they ate the 3.5 meter Pinocchio cetacean, Zephia cetus, the 4 meter whale, Pisco balina, and sometimes even pinnipeds such as Piscophoca. Even some larger whales were potential prey. Experts know Megalodon tried hunting them because bitten whale bones that show signs of healing have been uncovered. You can't heal if you're already dead. Paleontologists believe this predator would have lived and hunted primarily in coastal warm water environments where food was abundant. Megalodon was clearly a massive predatory shark, the likes of which has never been seen before or after its time. For decades, heck, maybe even centuries, new evidence keeps coming out that points to the existence of modern Megs. Photos, videos, and perhaps even fossils question everything we thought we knew. What if all the experts are wrong? What if the monster shark still lives? Like that's ever gonna happen. Oh, I love it. Now that we know what this animal was, we can look at the evidence of its survival and debunk it piece by piece. 
There are many lines of supposed evidence used when audiences are misled to believe it's some late surviving a totus, all of which are equally horrible. In order to avoid building up straw man arguments, I will be addressing some main points presented by popular videos and shows. Links will be down in the description below so you can see how I'm not making this up. These arguments are so wild I couldn't have come up with these if I tried. Kicking off with terrible argument number one. The coelacanth. I just gave you a bunch of scientific mumbo jumbo about megalodon and ecology, but <laughs> okay, here's my acting voice. Uh, who cares what the scientists say? They've been wrong about extinct fish before. A hundred years ago, paleontologists believed that this order of lobe-finned fish, Coelacanthus, went extinct at the end of the Cretaceous period with the dinosaurs. For the record, I don't think anyone arguing for modern megs would be informed enough to know that birds are literally dinosaurs, hence why I didn't just say the non-avian dinosaurs went extinct. Anyways, because a living coelacanth was found, that means Megalodon must be alive too. Scientists just haven't found them yet. Okay, now transitioning back to life, back to reality, you viewers at home should know that lies are sold with hints of truth. Yes, two species of the coelacanth genus, Latimeria, have been discovered. The West Indian Ocean coelacanth was first discovered to science in 1938 off the coast of South Africa. Then in 1997, a second species was found off of the Indonesian coast, the Indonesian coelacanth. Sure, new discoveries have been made. Does this mean there's a giant killer shark hiding out in the ocean? Well, remember, Megalodon was a coastal, warm water shark. Researchers would have found an 18 meter meg ages ago if they were still alive. Coelacanths, on the other hand, only reach 2 meters, are nocturnal, cave dwelling, and live hundreds of meters below the surface. Of course it would be difficult to find. And again, Latimeria was discovered in 1938, nearly a hundred years ago, long before all the modern tech and gadgets available at our disposal now. So a smaller, secluded fish was found a century ago, but we can't find an enormous coastal whale eater with modern tech? Please, guys, never turn your brains off like this. Don't take in this kind of nonsense. Now think, man. Think. Yeah, this proves the Meg's extinction, if anything. Time for terrible argument number two. It's in the deep sea. Let's bring the voice back. Scientists don't know everything. How do they know Megalodon's extinct? Have they searched everywhere for it? No, because although the oceans cover 71% of planet Earth, we've only explored 5%. It's probably hiding somewhere in the deep. The Mariana Trench is a good spot for Megs to survive unnoticed. Man, I love how easy it is to tell if someone has no idea what they're talking about. The moment you hear them pull out the whole, we've only explored 5% phrase, you instantly know nothing afterwards will include brain cells. Before I get to the meat of the problem here, I should point out how hiding is such a bad word selection. It's constantly used by these extinction deniers. Hiding implies that the sharks know humans are looking for them, but are actively avoiding detection. How would a megalodon know how popular and sought after it is? Then why would they know when and where to hide? How do they know submersibles, drones, and satellites are human controlled too, so they can hide from these as well? With bad word choice aside, this argument is just as nonsensical as the first one. There's a reason why humans haven't explored 95% of the ocean. Because there's nothing there. Okay, maybe not nothing, but certainly not a whole lot. The ocean is just a vast expanse of emptiness, just like my soul after paying to see the Emoji movie in theaters. But if we're talking about the deep, deep ocean, like the Abyssopelagic and Hadal zones, those are some of the most inhospitable places on Earth. The deepest point, the Challenger Deep of the Mariana Trench, is nearly 11,000 meters deep. I can't even wrap my head around that, it's such a crazy figure. But even there, new submersibles have allowed both uncrewed and crewed descents down into the depths. Heck, even Titanic director James Cameron made it to the bottom. Humans and submersibles have explored parts of the deep ocean. Spoiler alert, still no Megalodon. 
By the way, remember the Titan submarine that recently imploded, causing a wave of memes? Well, the Titan submarine was 3,500 meters down when the rich people went splat. That ain't nothing, still near the bottom of the ocean's midnight zone, though not even close to the world's lowest trenches. Still at that depth, the pressure was too much. For further reference, let's compare that to some fish. The deepest diving shark is the whale shark, recorded at a measly 1,928 meters down. The shark that lives the furthest down is the Portuguese dogfish, just passing the Titan at 3,700 meters. It only grows to about 3 feet, less than a meter. And the deepest fish ever found is a snailfish, Pseudoliparis, at 8,300 meters below. So even the deepest fish wouldn't get anywhere close to the bottom of the Mariana Trench. Now picture Omegalodon. Somehow, this humongous coastal shark with no known deep sea adaptations is supposed to survive in the Mariana Trench. <laughs> no, definitely not. Megalodon would instantly be crushed like a soup can. All around it would be the crushing weight of over a thousand atmospheres, or 15,750 psi. Nothing could live down there aside from some small invertebrates and microorganisms. That brings me to yet another fallacy here. If by some miracle, the largest shark ever could handle the pressure, what would it eat? How do you sustain an entire population of megs on shrimp and sea cucumbers? Remember what their diet is. I didn't just give that information for fun. Whales, dolphins, fatty pinnipeds, sea turtles, other sharks, animals you wouldn't find in the bottom of the sea. The most fundamental needs to survive just aren't there. Ignoring getting crushed too. Now we can segue into terrible argument number three, Megalodon Evolved. Instead of going extinct, the Megalodon evolved to adapt to life in the deep ocean. Simple, straightforward, and the fastest to debunk. That's because it has all the same flaws as the previous two arguments. If the shark were to evolve some deep diving adaptations, it still wouldn't be able to live anywhere near the bottom of the ocean. Like I said before, even the deepest shark we know of only goes to about 3,700 meters. Additionally, that would be some super sudden and drastic change. Change that isn't possible for an apex predator so shortly. Maybe the megs found rapture and spliced different, who knows. Perhaps this argument may be more alluring for an animal of mysterious origins with an evolutionary history scientists know little about. However, the Atotis lineage is very well documented at this point. We have the Cretaceous Cretolamna evolving into the Atotis genus, and then several species within the genus leading up to Megalodon. Fossilized teeth found throughout the Cenozoic tell a fairly complete picture. And guess what? After the Pliocene, suddenly all the totus teeth disappear from the fossil record after worldwide distribution for tens of millions of years. And by some crazy coincidence, after discovering over 500 shark species and modern coelacanths too, we still haven't found any atotus. Hmm, I wonder what happened. Time for terrible argument number four, new teeth. Hey everyone, look, there is fossil evidence to support a living megalodon. Fossilized teeth look white like new teeth, and they've been dated to be only a few thousand years old. It must still be alive somewhere. Such evidence may sound the most convincing. We do have examples of white megalodon teeth. So case closed then, right? This myth gets graded perfection? No! Of course not. Having pearly white teeth does not mean they're brand new. Fossils can come in a wide range of colors depending on the sediment around them. During the fossilization process, minerals replace the animal's organic material, so the bones, teeth, or soft tissue on rare occasions change to resemble the rock around them. Different sediments can also react differently to the bits a creature left behind. For instance, enamel can look different than roots because of their different chemical compositions. This is all one explanation. A second cause after the fossilization process may be groundwater flowing around the buried tooth. Water running through a fossil can leach out the minerals, leaving a whiter tooth. That's how the meg got its shiny teeth. Shiny teeth and me. Shiny.
As for some New Caledonia fossils dating between 11,000 and 24,000 years old, well, these were two specimens dredged up from the sea in 1875 by the HMS Challenger, a ship in the Royal Navy. These teeth were then dated in 1959 to determine their age, but the researcher used a totally bogus method of measuring the amount of magnesium dioxide that grew on them. Paleontologists have known about how bad such methods and results were since a bottle in 1970, but that hasn't stopped certain personalities from clinging to these numbers. Any trustworthy method will give you a Miocene or Pliocene age, as expected. And now for the last bit of the video, terrible argument number 5, photo evidence. Well, you know what, screw you and your fake facts, Red Raptor writes. You're wrong because I've seen pictures and videos of Megalodon myself. I know it's alive. The crap. 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 Mega crap. Guys, we live in a world so advanced that I listen to AI Squidward singing my way to help me sleep at night. Is it so hard to believe images can be doctored? Anyone can harness the power of technology to fake things. Actually, I'll show some of the most common photos used by modern Meg fanatics and easily debunk them. This one is easy. I have no idea how anyone can fall for this. We're clearly looking at a capture from the Discovery special Sharkzilla, featuring the Mythbusters. Immediately apparent in the bottom left, you can find Tori Balechi and the late, great Grant Imahara. Heck, the shark even has folds from the plastic. It looks like a parade float, not a real specimen. Here's some more evidence. An obviously CGI whale dead on a beach. This is like sci-fi channel CGI too. Nothing nearly as convincing as prehistoric planet. The way in which the bite is presented makes zero sense too. Why would a shark bite its victim tail first and forward? It would just grab a whole mouthful of fluke. A more sensible fake image would show a wound on the tail's side. This one, this one's a basking shark. The general public is less aware of these gentle giants, so seeing such a massive fish tends to trigger the wildest ideas. Here's one clip that made its way around the internet, and that's a Greenland shark. The skin, the patterning, the shape, this is 100% a Greenland shark. Probably the most famous image is one of a supposed megalodon slicing the waters off the coast of Cape Town, all captured by Nazi U-boats during World War II. Man, it's weird how adding Nazi to the front of any mumbo jumbo somehow gives it more credibility. Nazi U-boat discovers megalodon, because of course their scientific prowess would make them the keepers of meg secrets. Like all the other evidence, this is a load of garbage. The original source was a capture of archived U-boat footage taken out in the Atlantic. Then the capture was edited by Discovery for their fake Shark Week documentary, The Monster Shark Lives. Real scientists and paleo enthusiasts have been cleaning up the mess ever since. Now, with all that said, all those poorly thought out arguments out of the way, why did the Megalodon actually go extinct about 2.6 million years ago at the end of the Pliocene? Well, there have been some thoughts on that. A more outdated theory now is that all the large whales up and moved into colder waters near the poles, leaving our predator without enough food. However, new research done in 2016 by Catalina Pimiento et al. argues that mesothermy may have helped this species hunt in colder waters. So now experts think that faunal changes are more to blame. Megs didn't go extinct right away, but began to decrease in prominence by the late Miocene due to an increase in competition. Ocean saw the arrival of the large predatory sperm whale Leviathan Melvilli, as well as the ancestor to the great white shark. During the Pliocene came orcas and great whites proper, who may have been better suited to the changing ecosystem. Growing pressure from competitors didn't help once the Atodis had to tighten their belts. A decrease in the diversity of whales may have put an end to their reign. It's estimated that a third of whales went extinct at the end of the Pliocene, from about 60 species to around 40. As some of their food sources disappeared, megalodons couldn't find enough prey to sustain their incredible sizes. Being a giant apex predator may sound cool, it may get you the movies, and you can access the larger prey items, but it comes at a great cost. 
Supporting that mass requires a huge caloric intake. Did you do it? Yes. What did it cost? Everything. At the top of the food chain, they're the most vulnerable to change. Once the food supply dwindles, they can no longer support themselves and go extinct, which is why we don't have any around today. To wrap this up, we've gone through the main points pushed by sensationalist media who are desperate for attention. I'm sure more photos, more videos, more stupid arguments will come, though they'll likely all be just as bad. We can say with certainty that the monster shark, a totus megalodon, is in fact extinct, which means I have to grade this paleo myth as... That idea is just the worst. Who would have guessed? It's too bad that such an amazing animal is shrouded in so much ignorance and sensationalism. Hopefully, more of the public will appreciate Megalodon for what it was without falling into crazy conspiracies. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to please leave a like, subscribe, and to check out my social media. See you next time.